Hi, welcome to the Beacon of Light, home of the Foundation of Light, right next door to the Stadium of Light, the home of Sunderland Football Club. And for those of you who don't know, the Foundation is one of the largest and best sport charities in the country, using the power of the game to improve the lives of people in the northeast of England. It was set up in 2001 by Sir Bob Murray, who was then chairman of the football club, and with its support, its health, education, and community programmes, it's helped thousands of families region. Well, the Beacon here was officially opened last year by HRH, the Countess of Wessex, who's the Foundation's Royal Patron. It's a fantastic facility with a superb sports hall, which doubles as an event space and conference space. There's a school based here, and there's even a rooftop football pitch. All of which, of course, takes a lot of money to run, with funds also needed. For the many outreach programmes, which is so important in the current climate. So, What's all that got to do with a book launch? Well, I'm joined today by David Corner, someone who lived the dream back in the 1980s by playing for Sunderland and football team. But it was a dream which turned into a bit of a nightmare and which I turned into a stage play. That stage play, called Cornered, has now been turned into this, into a CD and also into an online audio book. And it's been launched for its fund for the foundation in what is the middle of... UK's Anti-Bullying Week, which pretty nicely, as you'll find out, brings all the strands together. We'll start by introducing Davey and getting a bit of background. Uh, Davey, as I said, Sunderland, hometown lad, Sunderland born and bred. Yes, yeah, I was, uh, I, was I went to school in Sunderland, uh, St Thomas Aquinas, um, and uh, it was a dream come true. I went straight from school um, and played for Sunderland as a uh, I signed as a, a bit of an apprentice at 16. Um, I was an apprentice for about a year and a half. And then I started going to the first team squad. And then at the age of 18, I, on my fifth game, I played at Wembley on my hometown club, which, again, was a was an absolute dream come true. Unbelievable. When, who were the, the sort of players that you remember from uh, the time when you started at the club? Was there anyone you particularly looked up to? Um, well, my, my first coach was... Was Jim Montgomery, who for me is a, is a legend of the, of the club and always will be. He's a fantastic, uh, fantastic man, actually. Um, but at, at the time, there was uh, there was Barry Bedderton, Chris Turner, Gary Rowell. Um, obviously, Gary Rowell left the club before. I, I think I played a couple of games with him um, in the reserves and then I maybe one, one or two in the first team. And then he left the club. Um, and uh, in, in the Wembley Cup, Team was obviously Chris Turner, Barry Bennett, and Nick Pickering, uh, Gordon Chisholm, and Gary Bennett, who, who for me is another legend of the club, uh, another great guy. Um, all, all great memories, great memories. What about playing at Roker Park as well, running out there for the first time when you'd been watching from the stands? What were you, what were you Roker End, Full End? Used to I, uh, I used to stand at the Roker End, and uh, I, I will say as, as magnificent as this stadium is, the Stadium of Light. Uh, I know I'm a little bit biased, but uh, I don't think you'll ever recreate the atmosphere of Rover Park. And I know people of my, uh, my age will always agree with me. Um, it was a fantastic place to play. The pitch was always absolutely perfect, or a bit to be at the time. These days, I, I will hear some that. Um, but it was, a, it was a great place to play. The atmosphere was fantastic. And, uh, and you used to look forward to it every time, you know. Did you know where, you, where your pals were, were standing and your mum and dad when you, went, when you walked out on the pitch? Uh, my pals were always in the, the full end. Uh, my mum and dad looked enough with, to get the tickets I, I supplied for them on the, on the day. And uh, they used to always sit and, and just the just other families. You, know, uh, you knew where they were, but you, 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 yeah, there wasn't that many people because there was, um, I think, more sports games them days. Although we did have uh, crowds that were about 12,000, but most of them were over 30,000 crowds for decent games, you know. One, one game against Man United, FA Cup. Um, uh, I think there was 36,000 there. And uh, it, was, it was a fantastic atmosphere. 100,000 at Wembley, though. What, what was that like, walking out at Wembley at the age of 18? Again, absolutely. Uh, uh, walking out at Wembley, I, I just remember the, the crescendo of noise. Um, and I think I was about fourth, fifth in line. And, uh, and I'm thinking, well, all this noise couldn't be for us, you know? Uh, it couldn't be for... But us actually walking out, it could be that much noise, and it was. It was actually the cheering was for the two teams walking out, and it was a 
it was something that will live with me forever and uh, magnificent, magnificent uh, experience. I think most Sunderland fans, you don't have to be a certain age to know what happened in the final. Um, without giving it away, how was the whole experience? Um, the, the final itself was absolutely, I, th I think if you look back at it, it was something I would never ever want to miss out on. Obviously the outcome and the, the actual game itself wasn't the best um, but the, the outcome of the Republic won nil. Um, and uh, I did get blamed for the goal, and uh, I still get blamed to this day for the goal of certain people. And uh, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I would have still wanted to play in the game if they told me that was going to happen. Um, like, like I mentioned earlier, a local lad playing in a, a national final uh, live on TV in, fr in front of 100,000 and then what, 9, 10 million watching on TV. It was, it was, again, it was, it was just a great time. Perfect opportunity to hear a little bit of a clip from the book. My mum set the video so I could see myself on the telly when we got back from London. Know how many times I've watched it? Correct. Never. Not once. Well, you wouldn't, would you? Worst day of your life. Worst moment of your life. Live on telly in the days when there was hardly any footy on the box apart from match of the day. Only four channels back then, so if you were a footy fan, you'd be sat there with your lager and your crisps and your feet up on the settee. An audience of, I don't know how many millions, five, ten, twenty? <laughs> Doesn't matter really, there was enough. When videos went out of fashion, I thought that might be it, you know. You could still read about it in books and in the papers, but you'd never actually see it again unless they put it on telly on some footy programme or something like that. You know, great cock-ups of the 1980s. Let's have a laugh at what Davey did. So without giving too much away, Davey, your life changed quite dramatically after the final. Uh, I would say dramatically, instantly. Um, certainly um, with with all solid supporters, or a, a lot of solid supporters. Um, couldn't walk down the street without really getting abused um, and uh, verbally and, and physically. Um, it wasn't it wasn't nice at times. Um, it, it all started basically on the way back from from Wembley um, straight away. Actually, um, it, it was obviously coming back on the coach the following day uh, on the on the Monday. The final was on the Sunday, and uh, basically we we. Uh, 300 people outside of Roper Park waiting for us for our return. And uh, uh, Len Ashurst, the manager at the time, says, just get off the court and shake hands with a few people um, and then just make your way into the ground. So we, we got off the court and I just walked up to the lad. But there was barriers out. I walked up to the lad and uh, just about to shake his hand and he just leaned over the barriers, grabbed me over and he says, oh, you, you... It was your fault that we lost the cup and uh, they put us back. And uh, that was the start of it. And uh, and it went it went on and on. And it, it's, as I say, it, it's more... Uh, people laugh about it now, you know. And, uh, but uh, I still get the odd, the odd Yeah, wow. It is an incredible story. Um, and after your football career, you went on to be a policeman and that was, that was just as tough, was it? Yes, the the uh, basically the uniform didn't help the abuse then, you know. It was uh, I, I thought I thought well I might as well join a career where I'm going to get abused anyhow. So I uh, I joined the police, and uh, I was I, I used to get obviously I worked in same uh, in um, Easington, Peter Lee, and all them areas were massive Southern supporters. And uh, this I mean I was two years into my police career, and uh, basically the. The, the story about, you know, I, I went into a house basically just oh, to have a look at it. That's one yeah. of the best ones. Don't give it away. Right. <laughs> People have to buy the book to hear, the book to hear that. <laughs> the play was produced in, in 2017, uh, David, and got run at, um, at some theatres locally. When I first approached you to ask about if, if I could write a play about your life, what, what did you think? Um, I didn't think I'd had that interesting life, you know. And I thought, well, what do you want to write about me for? I said, you know, I, I played, yeah, I was lucky enough to play for my hometown team. I wanted to have a 12, 14 year uh, professional football career. Um, 
good guy enjoyed massively I says, uh, and now I went on to be a uh, policeman at the time when you approached me I was obviously still in the police and uh, it was that's might be a bit strange and I'm wondering what people wanted to come and see you know and uh, it, I think it turned out I, I had a quite an interesting uh, happy emotional um, life and I think you, you portrayed that in the in the play which was uh, which was great fantastic well it was it it was a great experience for um, for all of us to, to be involved. How, how did it feel to see yourself portrayed on stage as well? Very, very surreal. Very <laughs> surreal. Um, you know, seeing uh, a large part of my life um, a, 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 an act is in it out, you know, and it was uh, it was good. It was enjoyable. Um, sometimes it was a little bit, I cringed a bit, and oh, that happened, yeah, and I remember that. And, um, but I, I know... The, the play went on in, in certain areas in there, it was in Durham and, and some people who I work with in football, some people I work with in, um, in the police and, and all of them thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Said it was well worth going to see and well worth watching. And we mentioned it's it's UK anti-bullying week. Um, and it was, that was what you had put up with. You, you came through it, but it, it can't have been easy. No, it wasn't easy at all. It wasn't easy. Um, uh, the, the, the odd times, I, I did end up in hospital on a couple of occasions. Um, and uh, yeah, I had to bite me leap on many, many occasions because of the, the verbal abuse I was getting. Um, not just aimed at me, but sometimes towards my family. Um, and obviously, being the position I was in, I had to stand back and just take it. Um, the odd time I did crack. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think it was a form of bullying. You know, there's different types of bullying that you, you can look into. I think that was definitely a form of bullying that, uh, that I was suffering from at the time. Mm, amazing. Well, you've now got a chance to relive it all over again with an audio version. Um, thanks so much, David, for allowing me to, to tell your story. Um, and if you out there would like to hear it, CD version of Cornered um, is available through the SAFC club shop and also from the Beacon, if and when the club shop and the Beacon are allowed to open again after lockdown. Uh, it's also available as a download online. Just go online, put in Cornered, and you should find it available on any number of outlets. Perfect for lockdown listening and also for Christmas as well. Profits go to the Foundation of Light to help with the wonderful work that they're doing here. So I do hope you enjoy it, David. Thanks very much for joining us. And to you out there, thanks for listening.